Hello fans, collectors, and investors. Welcome back to Iconic Baseball. I'm Iconic Al. We're getting back into the countdown today and we're at number 68, which is a pre-war player. Always gets me excited. And not just any pre-war player, it's a catcher that I have ranked number five among all catchers all time. One of the great all-around catchers in baseball history, was a premier defensive player, as well as a 320 career hitter. A two-time MVP award winner, a three-time world champion, I'm talking about the great Mickey Cochran. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jack. I don't care if I never get back. Let me root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes. You're out at the old ball game. Mickey Cochran was a rare an elite talent. He was the greatest major league catcher of the pre-war era. You could argue that Josh Gibson was the greatest catcher of the pre-war era, uh, and you'd probably be right. But Mickey Cochran was a complete player. You have great offensive catchers. See Mike Piazza. You have great defensive catchers. See Yadier Molina. But Mickey Cochran was the complete package. He played a 10-year career, which was shortened after a near-fatal head injury when he was hit by a pitch in 1937. But he amassed 49.9 war over that 10 years, and he was phenomenal. A two-time MVP award winner, a 320 career hitter as a catcher. Guess what his career on base percentage was? 419. Guess who else has a career on base percentage of 419? Mike Trout. So Mickey Cochran got on base at a clip comparable to Mike Trout. That's the kind of player he was. He won three World Series championships, two with the Philadelphia Athletics, one with the Tigers. And anybody who follows the history of baseball knows that if it weren't for Mickey Cochran, we never would have had Mickey Mantle. In fact, the reason <laughs> Mickey Mantle was named Mickey was because his dad was an avid fan of Mickey Cochran. And so that's why he named his son Mickey. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. I mean, so really, here, here's a guy who inspired the name Mickey. Arguably the most iconic ball player of all time in Mickey Mantle. Okay, let's get into it. This is my one Mickey Cochran item. It is one that I'm very proud of. It's from 1933 DeLong. It's number six in the set. And this is a beautiful set. It pictures Mickey Cochran perched above the field that he played on paying reference to his years with the Philadelphia Athletics, where he won two world championships, anchored the catching position, one of the greatest catchers of any era, graded a PSA 2, which is a fine grade for a card of this era. A nice narrative on the back, kind of detailing how to play catcher. I always like that, kind of a tutorial. For those young kids that were collecting these cards, trading these cards, how to play catcher, but just a good, honest two with some rounded corners, but no paper loss, no significant damage, no obscene off-centering, just a good, honest two. I love a card like that. Presents honestly like a, <laughs> like a card from 1933 should. And just, I know I've mentioned things like this in the past, but just one more emphasis on pre-war and why I believe in it so much, especially for iconic players, players that are upper tier Hall of Famers, the likes of Mickey Cochran. It's populations, you know, in the modern market, even the vintage market, you have thousands of cards of certain issues graded for 
Hank Aaron or Willie Mays, and tens of thousands graded of modern players like Ronald Acuna and Juan Soto. You know how many cards have been graded of this issue? 1933 DeLong, Mickey Cochran? 102. 102 total at any grade. That is the power of pre-war. Um, if you can find a nice presenting copy at any grade, that is something. And, and I think the rest of the hobby probably still is catching up to this, uh, that the pre-war market is so limited in terms of population and available copies. And I think that will continue to drive values of cards like this, even low grade examples of meaningful players. And that's the key thing, meaningful players. Commons, maybe not. Uh, <laughs> second, yeah, second tier or third tier players, maybe not. But certainly upper tier Hall of Famers, players that have won multiple championships, MVP awards, uh, unanimous uh, well, upper tier Hall of Famers, those kinds of players, I, I think there's nowhere to go but up long term, really, for those types of cards, just because of the supply-demand dynamic. Uh, assuming the, the hobby continues to grow over time, which I believe it will, um, people will always be kind of clamoring for cards, playing days cards, of the all-time greats, the most iconic players of all time. So here's what we have, Mickey Cochran. Uh, in, in most people's opinion, a top 10 all-time catcher. Simple as that. So that's what I have for Mickey Cochran. I would love to add an autograph someday, but, you know, I'm no, in no hurry. It's just a matter of finding the right piece at the right price. And I'm a collector, and I can wait. I can be patient. And when the right piece uh, falls, <laughs> falls to me, then basically I'll be ready. Anyway, I appreciate you watching and following my countdown. And if this is something you enjoy, then I highly recommend you subscribe. And until next time, keep collecting and stay iconic.